This time on Norfolk Perspectives, we'll be talking about baseball and softball are coming around. It's that time of year. Learn more about the Nell program. I'm going to let you know what that means later on. And Norfolk upgrades its uh, energy plan, and it means that the lights stay on and it's nice and cool in the summer. Ocean View, be ready. St. Patrick's Day is coming in a very special way right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. Well, i got to be honest, it's gorgeous out today when we're taping this show. And what better time to talk about baseball than right now. And Pete Allen, yes, even sir. though it's going to be 30 degrees tomorrow, <laughs> you're talking baseball. Yeah, it's time for baseball. Play ball. That's right. Play ball. Okay, RBI and softball, what's the difference between the two? Well, it's the same. RBI has a, a baseball program as well as a softball program. And the softball, of course, is for the young ladies and the baseball is for, well, we have a co-ed program at the younger ages, and as they get a little bit older, it's just baseball for the guys. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. So, and now, and, and, and with the gals, as they grow older, they stick with the, uh, softball. the softball. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I got to tell you, I'm kind of learning some new insides with the, with the fitness center, with the fitness center and with our posts. Yes, sir. Really, I think, our background really is out in the field, isn't it? Yeah, it is on the field. But speaking of the fitness center, I heard you've been spending some time over at Norfolk Fitness and Wellness Center. Oh, man, the word's getting out? Yeah, the word is getting out. I heard you over there breaking records and all kinds of stuff. Uh, oh, all kinds of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the laugh meter is up. That's right. I'm a, I, I made a commitment because you guys keep coming on the sofa. Yeah. Yes, you sir. keep haranguing me about not getting out there and playing yes. softball. Yes. I'm not ready. You my, are ready. My wife takes me to ballroom dancing. I get winded. So okay. I, I went ahead and, and went with it. Awesome. As part of our Norfolk uh, Healthy Norfolk Initiative, yes, I'm going to start working out. Awesome. We're going to let the viewers see it. In fact, it's on this week. That's my what beginning. I'm talking about. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. Because if you talk about it, look at you. Uh, you know, Mr. Svelte. No, 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 not at all. But I just try and stay in shape, but try and eat right, and just try and exercise regularly. Okay, well, I'm on my second protein bar for the day. Okay. And right. I'm going to suck my belly button into my spine. I'm sure you'll be fine. Is that what I'm supposed to do? No. but <laughs> <It's> Superman. <laughs> and you go poke your chest out. There it there is. Right go. There you go. Okay, so continue talking while I do all that. Okay, well, okay RBI. RBI Baseball is an initiative for Major League Baseball. And this, uh, That's the big league guy. Yes, sir. Revitalizing baseball in inner cities. And the, the, oh, the kids okay. to get inner city kids back into baseball. And uh, it's great. They're, they have a bunch of uh, resources for us to be successful. And it's not just baseball, as we spoke about earlier. There's softball as well. Okay. And uh, it's for ages 5 to 17. Uh, and it's, just, it's, it's a great time. And the kids who are successful, or the teams who are successful, they have opportunity to move on to national tournaments. So, yeah. Yes. This is serious stuff. Yes, sir. They have an opportunity to play national, uh, in national tournaments, so it gives our kids the type of exposure to get them to the next level. Okay, because I remember going to the, you know, the baseball field in the local neighborhood, yeah. and we kind of did the whole thing about following the bat. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, always yeah. was the last one out, so I was <laughs> bat boy. We're not talking about that kind of informal pickup game. I mean, no, sir. This is, this no, is sir. coaching and... This is just like any other regular uh, Little League Baseball, uh, but, you know, this is sponsored by Major League Baseball. So we have resources available to us that other other leagues don't have so for instance uh, we may have opportunities to travel and play against different rbi teams in north carolina or in florida you know so it's 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 great and plus we also have you know uh major league baseball players who will come back and speak to our kids so cool but have training and stuff like that Pete, man, when you start talking about traveling to north carolina that That'll get expensive, won't it? Yeah, it can't. But uh, like I said, the resources that Major League Baseball provide, they also give us, uh, re financially support us to take some of these trips. So. Okay. So it really is opening it up to kids who may not think they have a chance because of their circumstances yeah, instead well, of their talent. Circumstances, kids who haven't been exposed to baseball. You know, uh, right now, if, if being completely honest with you, football and basketball is kind of like ruling the inner city uh, sports right now. And there are other opportunities, uh, baseball, you know, tennis, uh, lacrosse, soccer, all those different sports that I think they need to be exposed to. Uh, and this is just one way that we can get going in, in this particular sport, which is baseball. And it's, I mean, it's a, it's a great deal. I mean, who, you're backed by Major League Baseball. So. 
So right. Yeah. And so I mean, all of those ports you talked about, we can get plugged into at the at the rec center. Yes, sir. So yes, it's sir. really simple, and a lot of our rec centers are walking distance from everybody's house. Yep. Yep. So, in order to get plugged into RBI, though, how do they go about doing that? Uh, well, you can call Lakewood, which is uh, 441-5835. We're going to have a uh, registration will end the end of March, uh, March 29th. We're going to have a skills clinic uh, March the 23rd at Bramerton Rec Center. So all kids out there are interested in just learning uh, developmental skills, they can come over to Bramerton Rec Center uh, the March 23rd. And we're going to have, we also have, and I, I can't go any further without mentioning uh, North Police Department. And uh, the pals, uh, oh, yeah. Ali Williams, he's awesome. You know, they've been supporting us, helping us out with a batting cage over there. Uh, Norfolk State, uh, Coach Clark, the baseball coach over there, he's actually going to come in, bring his players, and do a lot of uh, the developmental stuff for the kids that we have it's set. He's going to actually run those those camps and clinics. So uh, they're getting college coaching. Cool. Yeah, yeah awesome. So it's really hooked up. So is a uh, website for somebody to go to? Um, Norfolk. Uh, Norfolk.gov, yeah. just go on that. Yes, sir. And uh, Lakewood, where is is that located? Lakewood is 1612 Willowwood Drive. Okay. It's right in between uh, Tidewater Drive and Granby Street. Okay. You know, P, I got to tell you, this, this interview is going to be over with because my, my belly button moved away from my spine. No, but you're fine, though. You keep working out. Don't give up. Keep going back, and pretty soon you, your chest is going to be sticking up just because. Yeah, well, check out Norfolk News now in a couple hours, and you'll see how far I got to go. Yes, Thanks sir. a lot for, uh, for being in. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the Nell program, and no, it's not a gal. Stay tuned. minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm really kind of confused a little bit because the person who's sitting on the sofa, I know for a long time, Janet Williams, you've been in human resources, you've been in public works, you've been in IT, now you're in Recreation, parks, and open space. I can't think of a broader base person having experience. Oh, in the auditor's office. Yeah. We what, what else did I miss? Um, manager's office. Manager's office. And grants. And grants. And and now you've been kind of the, the spirit yeah. of NEL. First of all, what does NEL stand for? NEL stands for the Norfolk Emerging Leaders Program. Yeah. Um, Do you have the position down? Yeah. <laughs> which means <laughs> reaching forward while pulling someone along. There we go. Yeah, so that's the logo of now. But um, it's been in existence about six to seven years. Mm -hmm. I think I've been with it about five years now. And um, it's an effective program. It's really starting to kind of change lives. You know, these people that go, come through this program, they end up working in our organization. And we're really proud to um, be a part of now. Yeah, because I, I know we've talked about this uh, in the in the workplace. I mean, let's face it: interns have this reputation, or program intern programs have this reputation of you have a high school kid or a college kid show up at the workplace, they kind of survive the summer, right. and they go back to school. Right. That's not what Nell's about, is it? And I, I think one of the things is people need to start thinking about what are you going to do with your young person a little bit earlier in the mm -hmm. year. Nell has two key components. The first component is a 16 to 19 year old program, which focuses on individuals in middle and high school. And even though it's not called an internship program, we focus on making sure that they come into our organization and really get a good sense of how local government works. With the executive internship program, that's for um, individuals matriculating through college at any age. Mm -hmm. And this year we have broadened that program to not only hit universities and colleges within the state of Virginia, but we have actually opened it nationwide. And you are an executive intern. That means you report to the city manager's office. Out of that office, you may be routed to another department. But your key focus is that you're going to work on two of our major initiatives in the city, which is lifelong learning and workforce development. So this is a real life job because out of this experience as an executive intern, you can actually become a full-time employee. And out of the Norfolk Emerging Leaders Program, you could elevate and become an executive intern when you go through college, so. Now, for, you know, but the, we, we, are, we do focus though on looking at Norfolk residents. 
Even though they might be going to school throughout the country, right? Yeah, we love to support our Norfolk mm -hmm. city and our Norfolk residents are part of what makes our city great. So that would be something that we, we, we feel good about having the initiative focus on that. On okay, that I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Because I remember we talked uh, on the sofa a couple of years ago when this was an idea. Yes. Now, when you mentioned the idea of Nell and the, co and the intern and then full time, we've got some some case studies in that that yeah. is for real. Let's talk about bully video. Oh, okay. When I say bullying video, what do you think of? I think about how much potential can 20 to 22 students get done in 10 weeks. Uh -huh. I think about give them an assignment and tell them that they can do it and then just kind of step back and see what can get done. Last year they developed a PSA initiative on uh, an anti-bullying campaign and that's where they could have stopped. They took that campaign to Norfolk Public Schools School Board, it got approved, and it is today part of the curriculum for what Norfolk Public Schools uses as a part of their anti-bullying campaign. I think sometimes you underestimate the capacity of what an individual can do, and when you come on to be a Norfolk Emerging Leader or a Norfolk Executive Intern, we're going to push you, and we're going to push you as far as you can go. A PSA developed in 10, year, in 10 weeks is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So. That's what they were able to do. And people see that PSA on this station all the time. All the time. Yeah. Now let's talk about the guy that was kind of the hub of it, Bryce. Bryce, Bryce Castillo came through our program last year in 2012 and he actually worked in um, civic facilities and I believe he actually works in communications right now but um, kinetic technology I think is his major and um, just all kinds of majors but the interest to be in government is where Bryce kind of um, makes us most proud and he's um, someone we're proud to call a city employee right now. What's really cool about Bryce, we we'll talk about Bryce even though he's not here, right. because what he represents though is he wasn't willing to just stick with checking the box. No, no. And he actually took advantage of having an opportunity to say, hey, I've got a lot of fire in my belly that I want to give to the city mm -hmm. and we're now seeing his work on, uh, on the station right. a yeah. lot. It's not that you've got to push them. You've got to make sure that the communication is really good with them. Because some people have like hidden talents that come into a job that they didn't know what to expect. You can really kind of bring out the best in them. So um, never underestimate the quiet person or the introvert. Cause okay, I know that there's a mom out there. There is. That says, my daughter Janet's going to make it. So what do you have for that mom to, what do you have to say to that mom of Janet? That mom of what Janet. What should Janet be doing in order to apply? She should be making sure that she's either gone to her local library or gone to the www.norfolk.gov website for where the NAIL applications are. But not only the Norfolk Emerging Leader applications are out there, but our executive internship application is out there also under Municipal Intern 2. Those positions will be out there until March the 15th. So this is a critical time right now that we're really asking you to um, think about what you want to do in the summer right now. And when you and your team are making the decision as to who to pick, I'm staying as far away from you as possible because yes, it's going to be a tough job. It will be tough, yes. Thanks for everything that you've brought to the city, but also brought to our youth and our community as the investment for the future. You're welcome. Appreciate it, Jane. Welcome. Thank when you. we come back, when we talk, it's not just about me being cool during the summer. It's you, too, when you come to City Hall. Stay tuned. Hey, Sandra. Oh, sorry. I'm just really surprised at how expensive food has gotten. We've been trying to put aside some money to buy a house, but lately we can barely make it from one paycheck to the next. I'm in the same boat, but with this additional money I'm getting from the EITC, things are looking better. EITC? It's the Earned Income Tax Credit. I'm going to be getting almost $2,500 back. What? For more on the EITC and free tax preparation, call or visit our website. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspective. So we've gone from all kinds of things, and now we're going to be talking about my comfort at the office, right? Is this what this is all about, my comfort at the office? Denise Thompson. It's partly about your comfort, Bob. Actually, if, um, if everything works fine, you'll be completely comfortable, and you won't even know that we're reducing costs and reducing our energy use at the same time. In other words, you just told me I had nothing to do with it. No, 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 you do, because um, you're the client, really, of our okay. central energy plant. And we wanted to come and talk with you about um, improvements that we made to the central energy plant and why, and how that ties in with the big picture of sustaining Norfolk's environment. Okay, Jerry Spivey? Yes. Now, you're right away program manager. How did you get wrapped up in the... Well, I wear many hats and... Uh, Which is a lot of people in City Hall. That's, you have to. I, I'm a certified energy manager and I've 
worked with Denise since she's been with the city on energy uh, projects and such. And we've uh, recently completed a purchase of a software called Energy Cap. And what we do with that is we've uh, input all the utility bills from all over the city, all the departments put their water, we sewer. a bunch of facilities in yes, a bunch. Yes, hundreds, uh, 100 buildings, three and a half million square feet. Mm -hmm. And we put all the information in, natural gas, electricity, water, oil, and we've, uh, you know, measure, manage, and save is what we like to say. Okay, so Jerry says there's a lot that can be done. She's driving, I mean, I've seen her, <laughs> She's, yeah. And Oliver, are you designing it? I'm designing it. Did uh, I figure that one out? He figured it out. <laughs> I uh, also, not we only can on the go design side, <laughs> overseeing the construction as well. So, okay, can I be frank with you guys? Absolutely. I had no idea this was going on. That, that's and Behind that's the, the way we like it. I mean, yeah. if if you don't know, then that means we're doing it right. Okay. I mean, we did over a four million dollar uh, improvement of the central plant, and you didn't even know what was going on. Can I ask you another question? You sure can. Where's the central plant? <laughs> I mean, this is, talk about behind the scenes. I mean, I think it, the guys, they have no idea. Is yeah, it in the, the center part of the city? It is not. The central plan is a probably, you can help me out, Jerry, with this, but um, I would say maybe a thousand feet mm -hmm. outside of the Next city the garage, complex. Next employee garage. Yes. Well, that building I walk past every yes, day. Every, that one. That mm -hmm. one that has steam coming out. Yes. Okay. That's it. So, that's and it. does that, now myth has it. That not only controls my office, but all those other facilities? The jail, the circuit court, general district court, city hall. Okay, so I'm assuming that the new courthouse is going up. Yes. They've said, finally, we're going to build something that's independent of all that. That's correct. Yeah. Well, it's part, it's being powered by the central energy plant. Heating so, and cooling will come from the central plant right. for the new courthouse. And, this, and the new courthouse, um, and again, this ties in with the big picture of, um, of support environmental quality and sustainability and reduce costs, the new courthouse will be a LEED certified building, which means leadership in energy and environmental design, and it'll have special energy f uh, saving features, recycled materials features, um, it's located near transit, so that's a good thing. We have lots of LEED buildings in Norfolk. So how are you able to pull that off with a plant, I'm assuming the plant was built about the same time City Hall was, was before Denise was born, <laughs> 1965. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Right? Well, you have a gift for About that. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it was built around 1965, so some, some would say, mm -hmm. tear it down, mm -hmm. replace with new technology. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work that way, does it? Well, we had a really good plant, and you might want to talk about some well, of the innovative features. Let's talk a little it. bit about how the plant works, and I'm going to keep it simple and keep Please, it in terms. Please, because I'm doing this to my thermostat. We, exactly. We basically have pipes that run from the central plant. I've been in the tunnel. Exactly, uh -huh. through That's the right. tunnel and over to the various buildings, city hall, the jail, the courts, and those pipes, they supply cold water, they supply hot water. And those coals, they, I mean, those pipes, they, they send that water through coals that are in air handling units, and that distributes the cold air or hot air in the building. Well, what we did was we basically took that existing infrastructure and improved it. I mean, we put in more efficient uh, motors, we put in more efficient chillers, we added boilers, we added digital controls to that equipment. So that's the way we took that 1965 technology and brought it up to date. Okay, and I remember sitting on committee meetings with you, Denise, several years ago when the manager came on, on board and really looked at, by doing this kind of stuff, some big bucks could be saved. Absolutely, as opposed to starting from scratch and building a whole new plant. But never right. once did I hear you talk about bringing a sweater to work. <laughs> I mean, I really thought that conserving energy during no, the winter meant getting no, cold. No, no, no. Well, you know, when you sometimes hear people when they talk about the environment and about environmental sustainability, Sacrifice. they say, no, no, no. They say it's about people, it's about planet, and it's about pocketbook. So the goal is for you to be comfortable and productive and for it not to cost a lot, for us to continue to use less energy, and that then keeps the cost down. And to by using less energy, we're um, we've got less of an impact, less of a carbon footprint on the planet. Well, it's kind of cool because I got to tell you, when I go in the men's room, I don't have to worry about turning the lights on or off. It's I know it's magic. magic. <laughs> it's they magic. light up. How do they know I'm there? I love automation. They they do know you're there, and they'll they turn off after about 10 or 15 minutes, depending on how they're set. And that was a wonderful. That was Oliver's project. Um, that was a wonderful application. We'll talk after this. <laughs> application of technology. You're gonna want to talk wonderful about Wonderful application. Yeah. Now, is that the kind of thing we're gonna be seeing incorporated kind of naturally then into the new courthouse, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Mm -hmm. yes. yeah, I'll be candid with you. We don't have to wait till then. I was over at the, uh, as we all heard mm -hmm. earlier, at, to the fitness mm -hmm. center. I'm kind of mm -hmm. hanging around right. some of our rec centers out. And mm -hmm. some of the new ones. That's right. We're putting yeah. occupancy and service in, in facilities now. I mean, when we go in, we're doing renovations, especially in restrooms or conference rooms that are not attended uh, often. I mean, that's the prime opportunity to have those types mm -hmm. of features. Well, I was at Lambert's Point, I believe it was, and the, and the whole gym mm -hmm. yeah, walked right. in. Mm -hmm. yes. And the same, mm -hmm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. ELF. Absolutely. Right, the lights right. came off. It's a fabulous technology because if the lights are left on inadvertently all night long, you're burning what, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen hours of energy, for nothing. But Denise, for okay, nothing. let's be candid. We got the money in the budget. Doesn't it just work that way? I mean, that you you budget for energy. What's no, the push? No, okay. because you you budget so that you can meet your needs as well as need, meet the needs of the future. So we're in a, in, a, um, in a time when we're all looking at the budget, and if there's places that we could save money at the same time that we can meet our goals, then you, right. don't, you, you don't want a budget that's um, mm -hmm. higher than you need. Why would you, you know, we could spend that money on schools, we could spend that money on bike racks, we could spend that money, or yeah. not spend that money and keep our tax rates You're low. sounding like the people I heard at this community conversation. Now, I know. I just got the wrap-up <laughs> sign, but oh, everybody's been looking at this I thing, know. and you said that had a lot to do with the courthouse. We brought this for you. Oh, the, cool. Just because we, we chill. Um, one of the things that new that the, that the plant does, the old part of the plant, and part of the reason we kept it is we we chill water at night in the summertime uh -huh. when the the um, rates are low, and then we use that water to cool our facilities. And it's a giant thermos. So I will think of the three you of you guys will, uh, every time I drink out. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thanks You're for very keeping welcome. us on the leading edge by being lead. When we come back, we're going to be talking about that party that everybody knows about, the Ocean View Parade by the Knights of Columbus. Stay tuned. Average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Okay, we are ready to roll out the biggest, the best parade in March in Ocean View ever. Right? Saturday, March 16th, 10 o'clock, Northside Middle School at Granby and Westmont. Uh, Congressman uh, Scott Ridgell will be cutting the tape, and that parade will start off north on Granby Street. And Carl Lee, you are the, uh, the, the media community liaison with that. And if we tell people that that's when they need to be there, they're going to miss the parade. We tell people that get there early. Yep. Get their parking. Be respectful of the, na uh, the neighborhood parking situation. There are parking lots to the north part of the uh, of the city along the beachfront there, but get there early because parking's uh, very limited. It's prime. Uh, Jimmy Rogers, you are the chair, though. Yes, you, I am. You are the one that's pulling all the strings and making it all work, right? Well, I kind of direct everybody and make sure it all gets done. That's a, that's a way of looking at it. <laughs> I, in full disclosure, you know, as, as host of the show, I have a lot of fun. But more importantly, in between uh, taping the shows, I have the pleasure of working with guys like you. And we've, we've been spending the last, you've been spending the last year getting ready for this parade, right? Oh, yes. Uh, Jimmy uh, called everybody to work uh, right back in late June, and we've been meeting uh, uh, within the meet the parade committee itself, we've been meeting with the civic leagues in the community to get the theme and and and, and issues that we want to to address with the parade, and it's it's a, it's a lot of work. Yeah, because some people, Jimmy, did, did they when how long have you been chairman of the parade? Almost ten years. Okay, so you forgot when they sold you the bill of goods about chairing this that oh, all you gotta do is yeah just be there. Yeah, ten o'clock, <laughs> the bunch of people will show up, right? Right. How do you pull it off? What what well, we, you pull we it work, off? Well, we work we work closely with the city, the cultural events department, and they help us with all the operations that the city would take care of, so police, traffic, uh, getting the permits and, the, and all the uh, things that we need in that area. But then we work with people, uh, the Shriners are a big part of our parade, 
Uh, they bring a lot of, they are parade people. And then we also have other groups and organizations throughout the city and in the entire Hampton Roads area that uh, want to be part of it. But we try to bring something that's inter not only entertaining, but inf informational to the, to the public. Yeah, I, I got it. I'm not sure if I shared this, but I had the pleasure of <coughs> driving in the parade. In 2004, my daughter was Miss Norfolk, and so we were in the parade. Mm -hmm. You guys put us back by the fire truck, but that's another story. <laughs> but by the end of the parade, she had been proposed to six times. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> she didn't accept any of them. But, I mean, the people, the crowds, it's really a community building event. What we hear all the time through the Civic Leagues and, and the community people, it's a reunion time. People, it's also timed around the spring breaks of the colleges, so a lot of the uh, the young students are back in their, you know, where they're from, and they come to the parade. It's a big reunion. Okay. But, the, but the communities has really taken ownership of this parade. Uh, they want to be a part of it. And most of the people that watch it have at one time actually been in the parade. So that helps add to the excitement. Right. Now, last year was a banner year because it happened to fall on the actual day. Mm -hmm. This year it's a 16th. The day 16th. before. But what I'm learning, guys, is that it doesn't matter if it's the day of, the day before, the week before. The Irish know how to party, but do we have that many Irishmen in Norfolk? Apparently we do, because <laughs> they all come out. <laughs> but the enthusiasm there every year. Some days the parade is three, four days before St. Patrick's Day, and they still come out and enjoy themselves and, and have a good time. Well, because when you look at the special events calendar, I mean, you guys really kind of launched the whole celebration time then there's the greening of Ghent and and then there's uh, uh, a concert downtown the same weekend so there's a whole lot going on we always say people are tired of that cabin fever and they can't wait to get outside and get out in the parade and meet their community is, is that because I've never met so many people that want to park in a meeting I mean that's just <laughs> you know they're there the night before yeah now we're trying to do and, and I appreciate you commenting because we're trying to I mean you keep in mind that people live in this neighborhood too though well, we've had great working relationship mm -hmm. with, uh, as Jim mentioned, with the city and city officials. And there's a lot of things that we've been working at in, in public works this year. From one of the, you know, some of the issues about children reaching into the parade, they've added uh, yellow striping along along the roads. They are on the median. So, you know, we were really asking parents to keep their kids behind the yellow line so that they're not in danger. And, uh, you know, we really work with, just yesterday we met with the police representative to talk about issues and things. So you're really controlling, but it's still going to be one heck of a good time. Oh, yeah. Oh, we yes, tell everybody to come and have a good time. Okay, I got to tell you, be it, good. they're raising the bar because I was at a meeting the other day with the Animal Care Center. They're all excited because they're moving from tying two grocery carts together to actually having a float this year in the parade. Well, you know, we're going to have the city recyclers here. We're going to have the Hampton University Proton Beam Therapy Center is ha uh, is putting on a float. It's a Hampton Roads uh, event, really. And then you're going to have a couple of Irishmen. A couple. Uh, so come look for them. Yeah. You got an awesome website. We've linked to it at Norfolk.gov, but the site, direct site. Norfolk.com. Okay. That, mm -hmm. the NorfolkParade.com is our website. And that's your website, and we've linked to it at yeah. ours. And uh, I'm wishing that's you great. guys to have one heck. But you know, of it's a not just a good time. good time. It has a large economic impact, also. Throughout that whole part of Norfolk, along Little Creek Road, and everything. Sure does. In fact, there's some you, on your website. There's going to be some parties, and I think a lot of the businesses take advantage of it too. Thanks a lot for everything you guys are doing to bring the world to Ocean View on uh, March 16th. Thanks for having. We've us, actually Bob. done. We've actually talked to the people in Ireland on a visit we made. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hey, we want to hear from you. What you'd like to see on TV 48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood? Give us a holler at 664. 6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you and you and you. Thanks a lot.